welcome back to chapter six. Uh, chapter six, we are going to be finishing up our little unit on trig, and this is some applications of trig. It doesn't use a lot of what we've been doing, um, aside from having angles and like sines of angles and cosines of angles and things like that. Um, but we're going to expand what we're doing to do some other cool things. Um, these first couple topics are about vectors. Um, we'll be looking at parametric equations and also polar equations. Polar equations are kind of fun. You can graph a lot of fun stuff. Um, for instance, the background of this slide is a polar equation, like one singular polar equation. And it gets us this little flowery pattern. Um, but that's for a later date. Um, this lesson, we are going to be looking at vectors. What are vectors? A little bit of um, addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication of scalars, um, finding magnitudes, component form, uh, things like that. There's going to be a bunch of topics here, but compared to a lot of what we've done, these are going to be actually remarkably easy. So let's take a look. The first question is, what are vectors? Well, a vector has two things. It has a magnitude and a direction, just like vector from The Incredibles. He has magnitude and direction. Um, and so what they look like in a graph type situation is we have a graph and the vector has a starting point and it has an ending point. So it has a, a um, initial point and a terminal point. The initial point is where we start out the dot, the terminal point is where we end, and that has an arrow. Um, generally speaking, I see it with one little thing. Um, our book puts a second arrow, like they make it look like an arrow. Um, I've always seen it with one because otherwise it starts looking like a ray. Now, I, in context, you can generally know what it's talking about, um, but I don't know. I like having it with one, but apparently it's, a, it's proper with both. Um, and so we have these things, it starts at one point and it goes to the other, not backwards. It starts at one, goes to the other. If we had actual values for this, let's say we have the starting point here at the point one comma two, and the ending point is over here at the point six comma, five and we're going from here to here we could find the component form of this vector now when we write a vector we could call this um, a couple different things if we started at a and went to b we could call this vector a b and again, I've always seen it with one little part of the arrow. Our book puts two, just a little um, difference in notation. So we, it could be a, b. We could have vector v. Uh, we can name vectors with lowercase letters. Usually start with v for vector. Uh, u is another one that we would use fairly frequently. Um, vector v it's generally speaking a um uh, bold that's kind of bold i wonder if i push harder nope so um, it's usually a bold lowercase letter that could get us our vector um, but what this would be to put it in component form it uses these angled brackets 
and we have two components. We have the horizontal component, we have the vertical component. The horizontal component is how far horizontally do we move? Well, that's going to be the, the ending x value minus the initial x value, 6 minus 1. We also have the vertical component. The vertical component is how much we go up. Well, that's going to be the ending y value minus the initial y value. And so this vector in component form could be written 6 minus 1 is 5, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So this has a magnitude and a direction, the which we'll look at um, specifically later. But what it doesn't have is a specific starting point. So it could start anywhere. This one happened to start at point 1, 2. We could put it in standard position, which would start it at the origin. Um, a lot of times, we just start at the origin, because it doesn't matter where we start. Um, and so that is the basic of what a vector is. We've got some more definition type stuff here. Um, the component form is a comma b, where a and b are the components of the vector. Standard representation is the arrow from the origin to the point, um, which again could be a full arrow or it could be just with one. Um, the magnitude is the length of the arrow and the direction is the direction which it's pointing. Um, the vector zero, or it's actually the vector O, um, but it's a zero vector is uh, zero comma zero, which doesn't have length or direction because it's just a point, but it's important to have something representing zero. Um, and so it's a bold O. Um, finding congruent vectors. So when we're finding congruent vectors, um, we'd want to see if they just are the same vector. So for this, if we have a couple vectors, I had left this other space open so I could show you how to find a vector, but we did that on the last slide. So um, to find vectors, we have vector RS and vector PQ. So first of all, they look like they're going in the same direction. They look like they could be congruent. If one of them was going the other way, they wouldn't be congruent because one would be going one way, one would be going the other. And so we can find both of these vectors. We can find vector RS is going to be, and then it's the head minus the tail. So it's negative one minus negative four. comma, 6 minus 2. So Rs is, well, minus negative is plus negative 1 plus 4 is 3, 6 minus 2 is 4. And then we can look at PQ. We go 5 minus 2 and 3 minus negative 1. So PQ, 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 minus negative 1 is plus 1, which is 4. These two things are the same, so these are congruent. You can't tell just by looking. One could be 3, 4, the other could be 3, 5. They're going to look very similar, um, but they're congruent. Congruent means they have the same direction and the same magnitude. Um, the direction means that they're parallel. The magnitude, they're both the same length. So that's what congruent vectors look like. Now the magnitude of the vector. A magnitude of a vector is the length, as we saw, and so if we have a vector, if we wanted to find the length of it, wouldn't we just find 
this distance and find this distance and then use Pythagorean theorem? Yeah. Well, this distance, like if we were to write this vector in component form, it would look like that, x comma y, or a lot of times a comma b. So if our vector v equals a comma b, then the magnitude of v, which is written like that in pretty much everywhere I've ever seen, or um, the book, this particular one, just has one absolute value, although they do mention that some places use a double absolute value, um, it's going to be a squared plus b squared, and then we square root. It's just, it's the distance formula, it's Pythagorean theorem. That's all it is. Um, we might have to find a and b, so it might be x minus x squared plus y minus y squared, and then square root. Um, but that's all it is. The hardest part about magnitude is not finding it. The hardest part about magnitude is when we get, say, vector v equals negative 1 comma 7. And it the directions will say, find that. What do you think the most common answer that I see is that is wrong? The most common wrong answer is 1 comma 7. People just take the absolute value of it because they're not paying attention to what it's actually asking for. The magnitude is going to be the square root of negative 1 squared plus 7 squared. Negative 1 squared is just 1. 7 squared is 49, so it's just going to be the square root of 50 which could also be 5 root 2. So the magnitude of v is just 5 root 2. That's it. Again, finding it's not hard. It's not paying attention and just the, oh, it's 1 comma 7. I, I mentioned it a bunch of times, but somebody's going to end up doing it. Don't be that guy. Let somebody else be that guy. You don't be that guy. Um, so here's the definition. This is the longer equation where we have x minus x squared and y minus y squared. Um, generally speaking, I would just find a and b first and then square, square, add them together, square root. Um, and notice the magnitude is just a number because it's a length. The length is just a number, um, and a number is called a scalar, by the way, um, because we have two different things that we're dealing with here. We have vectors, which looks kind of like an ordered pair because it has the two components, the horizontal component and the vertical component, and we have scalars, like the magnitude, which is just a number. We're going to use both of these in our vector oper operations. So we have two operations that we look at. Uh, we have addition, and we have scalar multiplication, where we multiply by a scalar. So we're going to take a vector and multiply it by um, a scalar, uh, by a number. Um, we'll have a couple vectors here that we're going to look at. Uh, we have u is negative uh, 1, 3, and v is 4, 7. Now the cool thing about these vector op vector operations is that if I told you to add u plus v right now, 
chances are every single one of you would do it correctly. So if you had to take a guess as to what u plus v would be, what would you guess? If you're thinking, huh, u plus v is probably just negative 1 plus 4, 3 plus 7 to get us 3 comma 10, you would be correct. So vector addition is, I don't want to say it's common sense, but it's, it's what you would probably be expecting it to be. Same thing with scalar multiplication. If we wanted 3u, what do you think you'd have to do with that? Distribute. So negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 3 times 3 is 9. That's all that is. So addition, multiplication, scalar multiplication, it's about the same. Uh, or it's the same as what you would think. Now notice here we don't have a vector times a vector. That's not one of our operations. Um, there's actually a couple different ways of multiplying vectors. One of them we'll see in the next topic, the dot product. Um, another one we'll see later on in the year, it's called a cross product. Uh, we don't use that until we get to three dimensions. So that's when we'll be looking at vectors in space, space, space. Um, but we just have um, addition and then scalar multiplication. Now, what are we doing here? So with the addition, how does the addition work? If we wanted to graph these, we would have u and we would have v. And these are just random u and v here. Um, but we'd graph u. And then at the ending point of u, we'd start v and graph it, that. And then the sum is just this vector from the beginning of u to the end of v. That's what the sum of that looks like. Now notice we could have also gone the other direction. We could have done v first and then u. So u plus v and v plus u are going to be the same thing, which based on how we did it should not be too much of a surprise, um, but it makes a parallelogram. Um, the scalar multiplication, when we multiply, we just extend it. We, we change the length, the magnitude of our vector. If we went negative, if we would have multiplied u by negative 1, we would have gone just that way instead. Um, we could combine these. We could say, all right, I want 2u minus 3v. All right, so first thing, 2u, be negative 2 comma 6, minus 3v, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 7 is 21. And now when we subtract, you'd have to sub like distribute the subtraction. So we'd have negative 2 minus 12 would be negative 14. 6 minus 21 would be negative 15. There we go. That's 2u minus 3v. Um, the addition and scalar multiplication does not really get harder than that. Um, little definitions here. So we have the addition, you just add the components. Um, the product of a scalar and vector, you distribute the scalar. Unit vectors. A unit vector is a vector in a direction of another vector uh, with the um, magnitude of 1. So how do you find that? The unit vector of v, uh, we'll go unit vectors, just we'll use u for unit vector of v is it's v, but then we just divide by its magnitude. So let's say v equals 
we'll go 3, 4. So the magnitude of V is going to be square root 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. Add them together, square root, we get 5. And so the unit vector of V, so U is going to be 3 fourths over 5, which is 1 fifth times 3 fourths, which we can distribute to get 3 fifths comma 4 fifths. So we can find those. Um, sometimes, um, uh, let's see, we had, we'll go W was, we had negative 1 comma 7 a little while ago, which we saw the magnitude was root 50 or 5 root 2. And so the unit vector here would be negative 1 over 5 root 2, 7 over 5 root 2. Or sometimes we would just have it um, factored out. 1 over 5 root 2 times negative 1, 7. Um, you can rationalize the denominator if you want. You could go negative root 2 over 10 and 7 root 2 over 10, um, but you don't generally need to. Um, standard unit vectors. So we have another way of writing vectors that involve standard unit vectors. We have two of them. We have i, which is the horizontal component. That's going to be 1, 0. And we have j, which is the vertical component, which is 0, 1. And so we could write a vector that was a comma b that's our horizontal part and our vertical part we could rewrite this as a i plus b j where i and j are these defined vectors um, so if we had say vector v over here we could rewrite this instead of the three comma four this could be three i plus 4j. This w over here, instead of negative 1, 7, could be negative i plus 7j. Uh, why would we want to do this? Some problems, sometimes it's easier to work with in this form. Sometimes it's easier to work with in component form. Being able to go back and forth between them is a very useful thing. Um, it's also easy. We could um, add these if we want to. V plus W, we would just combine like terms. We have 3i minus i. I'll write it down. So V plus W. Um, Sometimes people have trouble adding in this form. You can always change it back to the other form. But 3i plus negative i is just 2i. And then 4j plus 7j is 11j you literally combine your like terms and you could put that in component form it's just 2 comma 11 which is what we would get if we added their component forms together um, so the standard unit vectors can be useful um, direction angles direction angles it would be the the angle of the direct the angle of the the vector because sometimes we have it between two points and sometimes we're going to have like a bearing it's this degrees away from the axis and so knowing that is important and that's where the trig part comes into this so um, our vector we have it's going to be the magnitude times cosine theta because that's the horizontal part um, and then the magnitude times sine theta, because sine is the vertical part. What this is, it's 
we have our vector with our theta. Cosine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then we have to multiply by the distance. And then sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, which we then need to multiply by the distance. Um, so we get that. There are a couple types of problems that we get with direction angles. One type is find the components of the vector. So it gives us a direction angle, it gives us magnitude. This one's, generally speaking, the easier of the two, because V will just equal, we have the magnitude of 6, angle is 115, so we have 6 cosine 115 degrees, comma 6 sine 115 degrees. Cosine of 115 and sine of 115 are just numbers, so we can multiply. Cosine of 115 degrees is about negative 0.422 times 6 is negative 2.5357. And sine of 115 is 0.9 times 6 is about 5.4378. So that's all that was. If we think about 115 degrees, that's going to give us an angle that's right in this area. So it should make sense that cosine is negative and sine is positive. So that's one of the types of problems that we can get where we just plug it in. The other type is find the magnitude and direction angle of each vector. This one's a little bit trickier. Um, the first thing we'd want to find the magnitude. So magnitude of u is going to be the square root of 3 squared is 9 plus 2 squared is 4. So the magnitude of u is going to be root 13. And so we know that root 13 times the cosine of our angle has to equal 3. Also, root 13 times the sine of our angle has to equal 2. So um, we can divide. So we have cosine of our angle equals 3 over root 13. 3 over root 13 is about 0.8 three something and then we can do the inverse cosine of that value to get 33.69 degrees so that equals 33.69 degrees um, we could do the same thing with the sine uh, but we're finding that same angle so it really wouldn't um, do much but we have the magnitude was u, was root 13, and the, dir the direction angle was 35 or 33.69 degrees. So we can find both of those. Um, this other one, we can find the magnitude is going to be 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is 25, so the magnitude of V is root 29. And then we can say that negative 2 is going to have to equal root 29 cosine, we use alpha, since we're pretty close to the problem with thetas. We can divide by root 29, so negative 2 over root 29 equals cosine alpha. And then we can do the inverse cosine. So we have negative 2 over root 29 
inverse cosine of that value, which was about negative 3.37, is 111. So it gives us alpha is about 111.8. But if we were to graph that, 111.8 is going to be right about there. Well, that's great for that negative 2. But sign or the, the y value is negative 5. It should be down here. Well, remember that cosine is negative here and here. So in this case, our angle is going to be 360 minus 111.8. It's 0 0.8014. And so 360 minus that answer gives us an angle. Well, I'll still call it alpha is 248.1986 degrees. And that one will give us both the cosine and the sine as negative values. Um, so it is a good idea to check, make sure it's in the right quadrant. That's what you need to check for, because that'll be the signs. That'll be the, the big thing that could happen. Um, and so this is the crash course, or the not crash course, is introduction to vectors. Again, as I mentioned, there are a lot of different topics, but for the most part, they're not going to be um, crazy. Um, there are some applications with vectors. We'll see a lot of applications in the next um, couple lessons. Um, but vectors can be used for anything with a rate, basically. Um, a flight, an airplane, the magnitude is going to be the speed and we have a direction. Uh, rivers, wind, anything with that rate or speed is going to be the magnitude of the vector. Um, and so we can get off of just moving in a straight, like in one little line that's horizontal, um, and we can go a lot of different ways. Um, you can be swimming in a river, and so you're swimming at a certain speed, but the river's moving at a certain speed. You would add the vectors to get where you were going. Um, so lots of fun stuff that we can we can do with vectors um, and we'll see some of that in class um, and i will see you then but until then keep working problems keep asking questions and as always happy mathing